Demon Slayer fans, let's just go ahead and talk about it and get it out the way. Kuroji, normally I would never, but I need you to move back, baby. I'm just going to use the head. Foreshadowing. But y'all, when Muzan walked in here, first and foremost, that you affordable legendary type cinematography and the animation shift camera angles that had put Demon Slayer on the map in season one in the first place. So swift, so fresh, so clean. Ain't nobody. I hate hyping up booze on like this, but you, you, you just can't hate on it. Still walking there looking like Michael Jackson and shit. I put the head back. I got tired of holding it. But bro, all people was already online talking about this look like some WWE interest type shit. And it's WWE that I'm taking this line from, AKA the wise man, Paul Heyman. When you have a moment and you want to emphasize that moment and make people care about it, you have to make that moment last. It can't just be a one and done, I don't know where quick thing it happened and people are ready to move on to the next thing. With that being said, let's just talk about what happened. Not how it looked, not how crazy things went. This is what happened. Very slowly but surely, Muzan is on his way to the shrine. Rocking towards his interest as everything is moving around him, misty and all that shit. And he gets to the front entrance very dramatically, slowly, hands in his pockets, strutting to it. Cue the ending. The ending comes and goes, and we're right back, coming from the top angle, right there where Muzan is now, has now entered the shrine. With that ending theme still playing though, with all the sound effects necessary, as he still does the same walk, slow walk, strut around the he walking around the pathway around these bushes. We see him creeping through the side, that mist looking all red eyed and crazy. Slowly but surely making his way all the way up there to the point where even our head man, I think he's saying his name right, Ubi Kayashi, Ubi Yashi, my bad, I'm sorry. But he now he acknowledges Muzan is here. Muzan says his name, and then that's the end of the episode. That took so much time for him to slow strut all the way over there, even adding the ending into it. And you swear that whole thing was less than a minute. But in the episode, despite having freaking Himajima's flashback in it, despite having our moments with Tanjiro, we were talking with Inosuke, talking with Genya, talking with Sinisu, and all that going on, with him completing his training and moving on to the next step, even with the big fight with the Wind Hashira and Tabioka. It was that Muzan part there that made you feel like that part, just him walking to the shrine, is the reason why this had to be a long episode. To give this man the time necessary to do the most legendary interest this show has had yet. I don't know if you heard the news, but apparently Demon Slayer's final arc is going to be a movie trilogy. It's going to be three movies, some kind of Infinite Castle thing, I don't know, but they're going to be pretty much using those trilogies to map out the end of Demon Slayer after this is all said and done next week, where the Hashiras unite apparently. Just thinking about this Muzan scene, him walking over here and all the animation, camera angles, cinematography, everything just flowing together just for this clip right now. Not only does that make the hype very real of what we could possibly get next week as the finale of season 4, this is just anime quality. Then we're gonna take this and try to step it up for three whole ass movies? How are you sitting down right now? How are you not drooling from the mouth? Is the hype not real? Are we still not watching the same show? And this is for Muzan. Muzan of all people. Who's on Smooth Criminal got you feeling this way? Bro, I don't know what's coming up next. I don't know what's, what the next movie trilogy is gonna be about, but from this moment forward, and, and the slim chance, and the slim chance that the finale somehow bombs. The Demon Slayer hate officially will cease as of right now. I don't care who you are or what you have watched. All it took was this. But now that I talked about the end of the episode, let's get back to the start. Did I do my intro? I don't even know. This is Man Man Master Cell, leader of Master Nights in the round table of Company 1 subscribe to this spin. And we're here with Demon Slayer Season 4 Episode Review. Episode 7. Then they say there's going to be 40 minute episode. It was only like 31. Which to be fair is an extra half of an episode put on top of it. But that's really just like two and a half. The next week is supposed to be an hour. Is that really going to be like 40 minutes instead? Season 3 finale was 55 minutes. Or 51 minutes. How long was it? Nah. Season 3 finale still goes down as my favorite finale. I.e. the only one I've liked so far. So let's see how season 4 goes. Speaking of things of Demon Slayer that I typically do not like. But has been doing much better. It has been done well. Let's actually go ahead and just, since I'm already jumping around the episode. Talk about Hima Jimmy's flashback. Now, to play devil's advocate, we find out he comes from, I guess, property. He ain't eating right. He ain't, he's living with a bunch of kids, kind of like an orphan kind of thing. 
and all of them is not blood related. They're kind of scrapping to get by. But the youngest kid, of four, four years old, has to give the fish to back to him as their teacher because she believes he's too skinny and he needs to eat. And if you do fast forward to the end, demon attack, fucked his whole life up, blah, 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 right? No, 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 no. What happened to him and Jimmy was outright betrayal. First and foremost, this guy, one of the kids, kids, right? That was out late, past curfew, already fucking up, is gonna get hit up by a demon. Instead of that demon taking him out, he's gonna rat out his whole family. At this point, having a family dynamic in Demon Slayer is an Achilles heel, even if your name is Nesuko. Reminded that she wasn't supposed to die last season, but have one of the biggest main character card swipes in history. And this kid goes through all the motions, pretty much sent, just destroying the freaking <laughs> instant there so they couldn't see the demon coming, waiting for everybody to be asleep, playing dumb when the demon shows up. What kind of cocky freaking demon is this? This demon came in here, he walked up to the door, opened the door all politely and shit. Notice nobody else woke up besides the guy who set this whole thing up. And that same kid was the first to die. You trusted this demon for what now? Which at least we just presumed he was the first to die because apparently the demon quickly took out four of the kids, half the kids, right then and there. And before he even realized it, that's when he and Jimmy woke up trying to protect the other kids behind him. He told the kids to stay there and don't do anything and just stay behind them. The kids scared for their lives do not listen. And the second they moved, the second they got hit up. Also with the swiftness, they got taken out, killed, slit throats, dead kids on the ground. Damn, Demon Slayer. This is becoming episode one all over again. Leaving only the same girl, four-year-old girl, Sayo, behind Himajime. But at this point, with the need to protect that kid, Himajime just goes into survival mode, or protection mode, whatever you want to call it. And he bare hands this demon. And honestly, I'm not even sure if this is a testament of how strong Himajime actually was this entire time, or this demon really thinking he was hot shit when he wasn't. Maybe not the first instance of beating up a demon with your bare hands in the show, no. But man, he just gave him them hands for hours until the sun came up? That's some God of War type shit. And apparently, Hima Jimmy went so freaking berserk the next morning. Well, while the obvious betrayal of all this was that one kid who set all this up, by definition, how it went down, wow. Because even as it's giving a four year old scared girl the benefit of the doubt, she blamed the entire thing and believed the entire thing of everybody dying right here on Hima Jimmy, which I kind of can't look at outside of some bullshit. Try to give this girl the benefit of the doubt, yes, but you were standing behind this dude the whole time. When you was behind this guy, he was holding his hands out in front of the demon, did that mean nothing? You see his animalistic side come out true, and he was, but he was trying to protect you, and he beat up a demon. Do you not know what a demon was? But this your first encounter with a demon whatsoever, ever. And it was that demon, even if that was the case, was that demon who killed everybody else? If you didn't see all that, because he and Jimmy didn't see the first few people get taken out, is this demon like supposed to be just like an innocent bystander that came by the house and all of a sudden got attacked by Himajime? I'm trying to make it make sense, y'all. Like, I, 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 there's too many holes in this for me. A four-year-old girl crying and skin, skin in the corner at her A has to have some sense of what's going on, which is why she's crying in the first place, or B, no sense of what's going on, which means you trying to blame some, put all this solely on the blame on one person just don't make sense. But I guess before I say too much, indeed he was locked up for murder. One of the higher ups around there put in a good word for him and he got out. More than likely went back and actually looked at the evidence and was able to see that yeah, it was a demon attack. Even if the demon's body doesn't end up getting burnt up when the sun eventually came back around, it couldn't be that hard to figure out that him and Jimmy wasn't the guy. But as you can imagine, this was all quite the traumatic experience for our boy. It's also during this time he's telling this story because he is actually telling this flashback to Tanjiro specifically and he mentions that he is blind. Never gonna lie, you could probably easily find that out by just looking at his eyes and how he's crying from his eyes all the time. But honestly, I didn't think of that, just being real. I ain't, I ain't. But let me say this, because I do have a notorious history of not necessarily liking the flashbacks in Demon Slayer, how do I feel about this one? I feel this was a de definitely an interesting twist on it. A story like this in these flashbacks is something we have not had before. And I can't explicitly say I like this flashback, because liking the Demon Slayer flashback for its flashback is impossible because they're always so tragic. But I definitely don't mean it in the sense as in I didn't like it, I it brought down the show, turn it off, what are we watching it for? That's not how I feel about it. And it's, with his parallels to Tanjiro's story, of course Tanjiro's whole family got taken out by a demon, moves on! And Himajime using all this to talk to Tanjiro about how he acknowledges Tanjiro, because Tanjiro first thought he was acknowledged by him making the decision to save those kids over his sister by making that swift decision when Tanjiro had to correct them saying no, that was Nesuko's decision, when Himajime is like no, while you're right about that, the reason I acknowledge you and respect you is because of you being an actually a genuine person. 
as in he believes everybody has this crazy animalistic side to them when the back is against the wall, even like he does, but he hasn't seen that from Tangerill yet. Something that we have seen from Tangerill in season two, definitely, we see him go crazy as well. However, his faith and his belief did not waver. Yes, a lot of people hate Tangerill for his personality and how he is. However, he is the genuine article that, goddammit. What I'm ultimately saying is, this flashback equipped with him and Jimei's parallel with Tanjiro, they respect for each other, how their stories intertwine and stand side by side, it was actually quite the moment. Especially knowing this is the moment where Tanjiro has passed by pushing that boat on one show as well as getting this acknowledgement from the strongest Hashira. Leaving this flashback of doing much more than his job. Bringing a job, good job Demon Slayer. I will give you that one, yes. And despite what I said about Blue Zone at the end, that's, this definitely was the reason for real for real of the extended episode. Cause it, at the end of this flashback, all things were said and done. We was at the 17, 16 minute mark. <laughs> and Blue Zone needed more than five minutes to walk up to. <laughs> now there's indeed other things happening in this episode. Of course, the whole thing with Enosuke. Enosuke, despite Tanjiro going through that big thing last week and finally be able to move that boat on one show. Enosuke, while he does know the breathing techniques himself, he kind of just, you know, beats molding right now. And he is able to indeed move the boulder, even if he hasn't moved in as far as Tanjiro yet, and is not able to graduate at this time. I said graduate. Well, Inosuke is not far behind Tanjiro and indeed getting it done. But that is definitely more than we can say for our boy Zenitsu. However, there's not much we can say about our boy Zenitsu right now because, quite frankly, he didn't say much of the damn self. Literally, as Tanjiro pointed out. We'll get to Ginya in a second, but while we had that conversation where we, oh, everybody was eating the fish, and those get one to eat Zenitsu's this fish, which ultimately he didn't. A sign of respect? The Tanjiro said pretty much, you know, he probably starved and he wants to eat that fish. But when Tanjiro takes that fish to Zenitsu, Zenitsu is sitting on top of that boulder, which he's unable still to move. And with his back turned to Tanjiro the whole time, he's speaking in his calm voice. And his voice is so calm and sure right now, I honestly thought we had a moment where, where he was sleep talking. Kind of like how in season 2 where he was all of a sudden bossing up with his lightning moves while he, like, he technically sleep the whole time. He was still able to hold conversations and be cognizant the entire time. But despite being very much worried about Zenitsu, Tanjiro eventually leaves him alone. And we come to find that not only was Zenitsu awake this whole time during that conversation, his face was bloody. Zenitsu capping that off with saying this is something that he has to do. And during that conversation with Tanjiro he had earlier, he was pretty much telling Tanjiro not to worry about him, but Tanjiro needs to do what he needs to do. Do I know at all what's going on with Zenitsu right now? For real, for real? No, no clue. Also, no spoilers. But it's definitely safe to say that in this moment, he is trying to take his own path and find his own way, own way of doing things outside of what should have been said to do, outside what Tanjiro and Zenosuke is doing. Especially backed by the belief that he's not able to get it done the same way they are getting it done right now anyways. And while that may inadvertently make him the dark horse of the group, looking back on how Zenitsu got things done, or how he gets his power ups, and how he could be able to keep up this whole time anyways, he's never done it by traditional means. Because on paper, all Tanjiro really has to do is train and swim in the water with the biggest fish. And Nosuke never really being too far behind him. So this is why he's been able to hang, not so much. Which definitely leaves a lot of hype in his own right leading into these next few movies. Now when we go back to Ginya, that part when he fought with Inosuke for a brief moment there. But did you hear them punches being hit in them lands? I felt those. Wow. That comedy bit has some... <laughs> about Ginya has admitted he's able to move the boulder. He hasn't, he's unable to move it one show, so he can't exactly pass through this either. However, he does have an off-screen conversation with Tanjiro about his brother, which I'm sure we're going to get into next week, especially since his brother is here. Despite the restraining order. But up to time, he's in the middle of a fight with another Hashira. This time being the remaining Hashira, Tomioka. I'm going to say his name right the entire video, okay? Tomioka, Tomioka, Tomioka is indeed in the middle of a fight with the wind Hashira, whose name I still can't say. And since they're using winning swords, eventually those break down. He said, let's kill each other for fists. However, taking this the wrong way, which I don't think he took it the wrong way personally, watching this whole thing go down was Tanjiro. Make you have to make you wonder how this does it look from the in, in actual in show perspective. Because we're getting all the animation quality here, all the crazy stuff. And this man, when Hashiro is doing all these spin moves and whatnot, just trying to make his wind moves look that much more spectacular. Not saying Tomioka doesn't, but he's kind of a lot more calm with it. <laughs> I just wonder if it looks the same on our screen as it does in Tanjiro face to face. Especially since he's able to keep up with it now. Hey, that DBZ reference, R.I.P. Akira Toyama. I can talk about Red Mochi, but this video is getting long. And it's easy for me to dump on the Wind Hashira as I've done in the past, but if nothing else, he's definitely served a huge purpose here, as in being the guy to find out that, yes, Demon Eyes has infiltrated us, and we have been watched this entire time. Son of a bitch. 
So with the last episode being upon us, this is definitely a good time for Tanjiro to think about his sister. No Lyos type shit. And just to wrap things up, you definitely picked the best time to do so because Muzan is on the move. Yeah, it's a good thing. Hopefully next week actually does end up being an hour because <laughs> we got a lot to do. Or at least a lot of ground, ground to cover if we're talking about actually doing dealing with all the Hashiras. But apparently, like I said, that next week they're going to unite, so they're all going to be here. With that being said, one last hurrah before we get into those movies. Demon Slayer, what you got for me? If you watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out, subscribe to the spin move. Mm -hmm. Does that mean Kenroji's coming next week?